powered by Pipe TV. On the Move with Miss Tony, where I bring you the story and show ideas you requested. Of course, on this show, we always bring you phenomenal guests. And I have that one such guest that is a multi-award winning actor that has best known for his bad boy image on the box hit TV show, Empire. Please help me welcome to the show, Charles D. Clark. Hey, Charles. Hey, Miss Tony, how you doing? I'm good. I am so blessed. I am so excited to have you on the show. I've been watching you for a minute, and I can't believe I'm like starstruck, really, <laughs> because I can't. I'm starstruck. You're doing a big thing. I'm a fan of your work, and uh, it's an honor to build your platform. So thank you for having me, and uh, I applaud your journey thus far. Thank you so much. Thank you. Look, I want people to get to know more about you because I was doing a little bit of research and my goodness, you come from some some background, uh, humble oh, beginnings yeah. there. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's just start a little bit from the beginning of um, a little bit about your background, where you grew up, um, you know, how, well, let's not talk about how you got where you are right now, but where did you come from? Where are you raised? Well, I was born and uh, raised in Virginia, and then I ended up going to North Carolina for the most part of it, which goes directly to my testimony. Uh, but the thing about it is, um, in Virginia, when I, when I was born in the it's when my father died, uh, when I was five going on six, uh, he was killed in a fatal accident. And him and my mother supposed to get married two weeks later. So, yeah, very devastating. Uh, he was 32 years old when he got killed. Um, that was the beginning of, you know, the pains and nightmares and the, and the, just just the, the the spiritual warfare at a young age. Um, you know, trying to be there for my mom growing up. You know, you come a, a, you know from a kid to a young man, you start to you know identify emotions and and situations differently. And with me, I, I just felt like I deserved a dad, so I was willing to do anything to fill that void. And ultimately, it came from the street. So, did you did you have um other siblings? Uh well, I had a, my sister was born uh 1990. Oh. So, but you know, you know, this it went from the same dad or whatever. So it was from a different one. So, you know, she didn't really understand what I was going through at the time. Plus, she was she was young. Right. But as I got older, you know, I was trying to be an example for her. I do have a brother as well that my dad had um with another lady. Papa was a Rolling Stone. Oh, um, so that, yeah. I was going to say that for you. <laughs> yeah, but but my mom, you know, when he met my mom, you know, he, he, you know, he was that one man to one woman, you know, he was, right. you know, military. Right. He was ready, you know, to tie the knot. So it was just, you know, my mom was a great influence on him. That was so, the first so, you had, so basically you had to kind of grow up fast. I know. I, I guess I did because my mom was devastated. I mean, this is the first love of your life, you know, that you're everything, your best friend, and then you get killed two weeks before you go before getting married. You get married, so it's like, you know, what are you supposed to do? You know, I'm a kid. I'm 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 suffering too. But I guess what happens is that as a kid, I don't understand the death pain. Mm. 
like a grown up will. That's for so, so as right. I got it's older, different. it's totally yeah, different. it's different. Yeah, once I realized that he was never coming back physically, um, it made me very evil. It did. It, it did something. It did a number on me. I was just like, you know, I need a daddy. I want somebody to be, you know, my father figure. Right. And when you go in the streets and have pimps and killers and kingpins and you know drug dealers of all sorts of levels, uh, who's calling you good job, son, and giving you money. They're right. tending your, you know, your, right. you know, your eyes open 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 exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So now this is I, this is who you you were looking up to, right? Because that's yeah. who was in your yeah, that's who's in your life. Yeah, yeah. I I, I never I never joined a gang or got in the streets because I want to be a bad boy. Never because of that. Right. Uh, I did it because I was I was looking for again that replacement, and it just so happened that I was doing the street stuff so well. That it was it, it was starting to be to, to transfer to a different situation. In other words, it was no longer about me having a, a replacement for my dad. I was just getting it good because the devil had me a puppy. So um, you know, from drive bys to you know, gang bang, I was a good if I altered my main old the streets, I was a good enforcer. Uh for some heavy hitters. So, you know, I put in a lot of work on different levels. Right. Um just I would say I'm so grateful that God has mercy. And I'm grateful that God is a forgiving God. To the builder, to the, with a chaplain that talking with him, learning more about God. I mean, I mean, I mean look, don't get it twisted. My, 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 my family is, a, it is that you know, well, a lot of people in my family are Christian. Some people in my family, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I, I knew of God, but I didn't have the relationship with him personally for my purpose and for what I was supposed to be doing. Right. And I was able to develop that because in prison, all you have is time. You know, if you can right. step back, right. you can realize, blame the world. Or you can change yourself and be part of the change that God has coming for you. So I just figured that it was the it was the, it was the best way. You know, it was the best but way. It like, wow. on me already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I and just from there. Wow, Charles. Look, we're gonna we're gonna come right back. Um, I want to take a small break, but yeah. again, guys, you hear how Charles actually started, right? How he grew up. He had to grow up fast. On um, what 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 transpired during that time, and believe it or not. Things started to change. Now you out. So we're going to talk about what's going on with you, how your family has been your support as well. All right. So when we come back, we're going to talk more with Charles D. Clark. All right. Stay tuned. This Tony, Tony, Tony's on the move again. I have a phenomenal guest here. This is Charles D. Clark. We were just chopping up with him for a quick minute, um, just getting to know his beginnings. And um, before we left, I, I asked him, I said, you know, what about your family? Your, your family's supportive. So I want you, Charles, to talk a little bit about your family and how you actually start to get into acting. Well, it's a very unique story. Uh, my grandmother, uh, my grandmother, who's always been by my side, my dad's mom, um, you know, she's just been my second nature at heart, you know, other than my, you know, my real mom. Um, so my grandmother, she didn't visit me the, the, like the, most of my uh, prison bed because she didn't want to see me in those conditions. Right. But she decided to come near the end. I had like six, seven months left before I was released. When I went to the visitor room, my aunt came over to me real quick. She says, nephew, look at me, look at me, look at me, nephew, look, look at me. I'm looking at my grandmother, you know, my uncle. He's seen her, and I'm happy. I used to her for almost seven years, you know, going on to go, you know, seven, well, about seven years and, and a little bit, you know, uh, maybe a week. It was like right at that, um, that uh, milestone. And she said, your grandmother's dying. She said, your grandmother uh, has dementia. She has three brain tumors. And she said that whatever uh, she's thinking is to play along with it, because if you try to make anything, think anything different, based on what the doctor was saying, It'll put a you know strain on her condition. So I, that was a total big blow. You know, my grandma was like my hero, you know. Right. So when I went over there, you know, she said, hey grandma, you know, you know, she looked at me as if I was a stranger. And I can look into her eyes and see that she was fading away. She was gone, right. Yeah. So she called me Bug. Bug is my dad's nickname. So she thought I was my dad. Right. So I so instantly I had to become my father. Who's already dead. And mind you, I didn't get to this part where I see my dad's dead body. Okay. So I had to become that and look into the eyes of my grandmother 
and she was fading away. So the the, the, the the visit was like two and a half hours. So for two and a half hours, everything I learned about my dad, you know, growing up, and my grandmother, from my uncles, from his friends, I absorbed it. I had to build that character. Wow. And, and she was convinced I was him. Uh, to the point to where she was leaving out, she told the CO, my son has served enough time in the military. Can he come home with me? Come home with the military. So <clears throat> when she left, the CO, you know, they always go uh, check you out, make sure you get no contraband, all that stuff, whatever. Mm-hmm. And he didn't even check it. He know, you know I, I was flying straight. You know, he know I, I was, I'm trying to go home. You know, I was at the end of my bed. Right. So but when he came to me, his eyes was real glass. He didn't cry, but it was he, like his thoughts are called the verge. Mm-hmm. He says, Charles, whatever you do when you get out of here, I don't know if you have playing, but whatever you do, you need to be an actor. He says, because for you to sacrifice that moment with your grandmother like that for her condition, he says, that's an Oscar winning moment, that's a natural that you, wow. you can't be trained for that. Right. And I realized as I'm getting out of prison months later that I didn't sacrifice nothing. My grandmother sacrificed her last moment because she died three months later after that visit. So when I do my speaking engagements, I tell everybody, as I'm telling you in your wonderful platform, that I always say my grandmother gave me my first audition. Wow. That's a And 2009, February 18, 2009, 6.45 a.m., I was released from prison. November of that year, I landed my first role in independent film. What? <laughs> the same year. What? Yeah. Okay, so 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 let's 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 push on right there. Yeah. How did you know to even go for that audition? Like, where did it come from? Did somebody say, "Hey, Charles, I got something for you"? Were you seeking something? Like, I got so many questions. <laughs> I really wasn't. I was I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this, but right now I need you know I've been been going almost eight years. Let me figure out what's going on. Let me you know see who's still alive, who is not. You know, I mean, it's been a, it's been a long time. So, but, um, you know, I went to a get-together and like someone from a production uh, saw me and it was like, hey, bro, you'd be a perfect for this role just by your looks. And I'm just like, okay. Really? And the industry to um, Brian Nesbitt, uh, New Wave Productions, Brian, he's the one that that, uh, that gave me the introduction to to what I'm doing now, you know, to build, to build my first set, first cameras, first directions. Right. It was him. He took, he took a chance on me, um, and and I, and I, I it was just an amazing feeling. I put it like this: when I got on set, it was a small part. I played the role of CJ. Um, the lights, you know, hearing everybody, you know, Sam, you know, roll Sam. But I'm just like, whoa, this is real. This is, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, whoa, boy, you, you're very funny for that. You, you a guy, y'all high five You know, I'm, I'm excited. And once that bug bit me, I was like. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. No way. God keep and going. This is and this is where the journey starts. This is where I realized, see, who would really believe in me. Because everybody just used to be being the, you know, this big bad boy, getting all this money, you know, you know, hey, you know, mess with us, you know, my nephew or my cousin or whatever. Now I'm doing something that to me is positive and that only me and my grandmother understood. Um my family. I, I tell you this. Out of 100% of my family, I would say 30% truly believed in me in the beginning. Oh, wow. um, yeah. Uh, they Being they are, believe in for family. Sometimes. Exactly. No. Um, I'll give you an example with Empire. I was the Taraji and Terrence um, Howard fan, always. That's, that's been, right. you know, yeah. yeah, even before Baby Bottom when Terrence was on Living Single. At yes. the oh, you yeah. remember that too? Yes. Yeah. So when people talk about being a fan, if you don't remember that, you're not a true fan, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I heard Empire was taking place in New York, New York was only, it's only four hours from, it felt four hours and 20 minutes, but, you know, right. I drive fast, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was actually shot in Chicago, even though the show was in New York. And I'm like, Chicago, so I'm thinking Chicago probably ain't that far, you know, I'm just assuming. I look, Chicago was almost 14 hours away. Right. And I was like, whoa. At the I'm time, so I didn't have, yeah, I didn't have no agent or no manager. Right. right. Independent. Independent. Yeah. Social media. Yeah, branding. You know, what's, what you're doing. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, you know, as far as branding, the branding part, I didn't get a right. team. But yeah, you know, you have to market yourself for people to know, hey, she's going somewhere. Like, how how am I going to get people to see me, notice exactly. me? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 
So, um, my friend was talking about he had some extra role, no parts, you know, like actually not a role. I mean, either you're an extra, you had a role. Extra, right, right. Um, you know, street pedestrians, you know, street tough guy, yeah. passerby. Yeah. So, fast forward, I drove to Chicago eight times in a month and one week. Two weeks. <laughs> you only got paid six to eight dollars for eight hours. So, <laughs> you know, it cost me almost a thousand dollars just going up there. Right, just travel alone. Right. Exactly. And the eighth time that I went up there, and although all this chaos, people said, Todd, you're crazy. Don't do that, man, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can make you be a bodyguard or someone, you know, for somebody or do whatever. But no, man, or, or, or you got to know somebody in LA, have a manager to, um, excuse me. And I was like, God, it's, it's, you know, maybe they're right. Manager. <laughs> exactly. So my daughter, um, see, at the time she was what? Five, I believe, mm. going on six. <clears throat> and um, she said, Dad, you want to be a star. Oh. That was like, how do you know? Oh, she's because God, because God, she saw yeah, yes. And, 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 and just, oh, just on another page real quick, um, you know, if you go on Facebook and you put in Charles D. Clark and daughter or baby inspire, Right. My, because I was a speaker, I became I did more speaking than acting before Empire. So okay. my, my my speaking name was called C Clark Inspire, and my daughter named Baby Inspire. <laughs> so that was that was what helped. Yeah, exactly. So well, look, Charles, I'm we're definitely going to keep going on um, on a roll with you, um, because yes, I would I would say that your breakout show was Empire. But you have not stopped then. You have been doing so much phenomenal stuff. So we're going to take a short break right now. And when we come back, you're going to give me and tell me everything, share with everybody these things that you've been doing. Because it's not only an actor, you've been producing. Mm-hmm. You've been doing short film. Mm-hmm. Guys, he's been speaking, doing speaking engagements. You know, again. Charles D. Clark. Yes, man of many talents, Charles. Thank you. <laughs> so let us come on back. We'll be right back with some more On the Move with Miss Tony. Miss Tony, Tony, Tony's on the move again. Hey, this is your girl, Miss Tony. Welcome back to On the Move with Miss Tony. Again, Charles D. Clark is in the house. And um, Charles, Look, you've been doing a lot of phenomenal things um, during um, Empire, after Empire, before. I mean, you've been doing so much stuff. There's actually one um, movie that I caught you in. I caught a snippet of you in, and it was called Charm City Kings. What a phenomenal, phenomenal movie. Um, but there's other stuff that you've been doing. Um, can you give us some insight on some other roles you've been playing out there? Yeah, South of Charles the King, a lot of the cameo appearance, that was because of Empire. Yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, Volkov Origin, uh, we did Volkov as a pilot, and then it's gonna be like a movie type series. Uh, shout out to um, uh, Listen Production, George Dibble, Cannons, and the whole cast and crew. Um, and then we did a thing called Judith Base in a short film, which is gonna actually be a movie, uh, the horror movie, so. I got my two producing credits from that. Um, also, um, let's see. I might be back on the Righteous, the righteous Gemstones. I don't know just yet. Uh, we have to know, see. Oh, on HBO. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Um, what's, happening? what's happening for, for this year? Like you said, you're getting ready for um, a, a particular role. Can you speak on it? Not yet, but when I, but when I can, I will let y'all know. Yes, um, exclusive. I'm calling it. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a, it's action. I can tell you that much. It's action. So, okay. so yeah, I'm doing a lot of training. Uh, and then, of course, the two movies that I'm in, uh, which is on Amazon Prime. I think one of them on Tubi, um, The Bridge by Britney's Body Productions. Let's check it out. It's a three part movie series. And five three two oh six. We're walking by Miss Kim Productions. Um, I'm also in that. Uh, it's, it's it's just you know He's training. Coming. You know, um, I'm still attending Julie, um, Julian um, Arts um, online. Well, Zoom, we like like we're doing now. Um, just 
protect, protecting my craft and, and inspiring the world. Beautiful, because I was about to ask you that, you know, you are a raw talent. So I wanted to find out how you actually um, start to prepare for these roles, you know, not knowing that, you know, you didn't go to acting school or anything, like I said, raw talent. So what do you do to help prepare you for your roles that you, um, you know, you go out for? Well, i tell you this. At first, I thought I was raw talent, but even if you have raw talent, they have, they have to be uh, strategic. So this is my fourth school, acting school, that I've been in my career, you know, uh, planning on going to one of LA as well. What I do is I just try to find something that's, that's, that I can relate to with the character. Uh, your character's supposed to be your best friend. And your best friend, you know this, you know everything about them. Their favorite color, what they eat, what takes them off, the pet peeve. You know, their background, their favorite vacation. So I treat their characters that. And I consume it so much until I don't exist because the cast director is not hiring me. They're hiring the character in the script. So my process, I try to disintegrate as much as me as possible and create the character as I'm doing that. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Have you, have you done like... um. I, I know I was trying to go out for a role before. Um, I don't even remember what it was. It was a while ago. And I kind of did um, like my own little thing, a, a little method acting. And um, they were like, thank you. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, what did I do wrong? You know, so I, I, I kind of like put that to the side, the acting. I was like, ah, just stick with TV, you know, on TV. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, tell, you, I tell you this um, in, a, in, a, in a short, uh, I call it short pyramid. Uh, a lot of times when you audition, sometimes you don't audition for this certain role at that specific time. Sometimes you can be so good, they won't hire you for that role because they know that the next project, you, you'll be better for. I've had projects to where I didn't, look, I've driven all the way to Louisiana, okay, 21 hours for a 30-second audition. <laughs> but I got called for another project under the same casting director. Ah, I so, got it. So, yeah, yeah. So if, if it's something that you really want to do and, you, and you're really passionate about it, you want to connect to that specific arts, go for it. Don't put it to the side. You only got one life, okay. you know. Yeah, good. You can good. do it. Yeah, do whatever you want to do. Yep. Yeah, that's fantastic. I like that advice, definitely. And there's something else I wanted to ask. Um, with you meeting some of these, um, I, I want to call them A-list actors. Like, yeah. How did you feel around them? Were you starstruck? I mean, like, how did they act? How how were you acting? Like, you know. Well, I, I tell you this. Um, Empire was like a buffet when it comes to A list. I mean, Taraji, Terrence, uh, you know, uh, Jesse and them just got in the game and, uh, you know, what Trey had did, uh, Selma and stuff. But you had like Forrest Whitaker, Felicia Rashad, I mean, all these people in the current area, Parker. It, yeah. was, it was a blessing. Um, I was only starstruck for Terrence and Taraji for the most part because I that's, that's who was my, my, my biggest influences. Um, but the respect level, the, you know, once you, once you work with them, you know, Every, you know, so many times as I did, it's, it's like real, it's there was real people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just it, it's amazing how you look at TV, but if you see them in person, it's like it's no different than me talking to a, the next door neighbor. Wow, that's but amazing. It's really what they deliver, yeah. TV makes them give them that. Oh my yeah. God, it's real. Yes. And, um, and, and one of my one of my favorite people, and you had to work close to um with him as exhibit. Like, how did it feel working close to him? You know what? Yeah, that, that you should run out of my mouth. Exhibit was was my was my main guy. I mean, of course, he played my boss for two seasons and uh, phenomenal. I mean, people are looking at him. You know, he's gay. Look, Exhibit is 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 existence is legendary. I mean, yeah, you know, a, a rap icon, you know, producer, actor, director. I mean, he's everything. I mean, come on, pick my ride. I mean, that was classic. Yeah. But outside of that, um, him, you know, being on Empire with him. Uh, really blessed me in so many ways because I'm not saying I can get on Empire without Exhibit, but by Exhibit creating his role the way he did and, and pushed it because he almost been a guest star, not a uh, regular cast member. Oh, I heard he correct. So well. correct. They had yeah. kind to of roll him in there like almost like a permanent. Yeah. Well, the whole West Coast range went up like tremendously just yeah. because of him. Yeah. So when I saw that, I'm just like, man, you know, so. It's a blessing. Exhibit is down to earth, about as good as everybody is, you know. And, and I want to put it out there to a lot of people real quick. A lot of people say, oh, this, this celebrity was mean. And I was, when, they, when you try to remember 15 lines plus, 
They don't have time to talk. Let them do their job. So and when you try to sneak pictures, you become right, a fan. Right, I got you. Right, yeah. Right. So. And and look, I don't want to go without mentioning again. You are also a producer. Producer, name the shows. Well, I mean, Ball Call Board, you know, which is going to be on Amazon Prime, um, probably. Uh, we, we shop in different you know, networks and uh, distributions or whatever as we speak. We have some good things going. Uh, again, Judith Basin, uh, Broken Exchange Uncoded, uh, starring Sean Nelson, um, and also acting there as well. I have a couple other things coming up. So I'm, I'm learning, I'm trying to learn how to direct a little bit too. Again, George Dibble, um, Melissa Production is training me, and I got other you know, mentors. Uh, nice mentor. So, yeah. Nice mentor. So yeah. I, I want people to definitely follow you and see the stuff that um, that you're doing. So give them this your social media where they can follow you on. Yeah, on Instagram is Charles D. Clark 1980. Um, on uh, Twitter is C. Clark Inspired, the number seven. And then Facebook, Charles D. Clark and LinkedIn, the same thing. The, I, what I tell people is Google my name. And I'm not trying to be like I'm all dick because I'm not. It's all God. But if you want to see everything's attached to me, just put up my name, Charles D. Clark. It's all there. And I appreciate everybody for supporting what I'm doing. Yes, definitely, guys. You have to um, support him. He's been doing a lot of great stuff. You're going to see more of this space coming up because not only, again, in the acting, in the production, directing, we say getting into directing, but um, this is the next space for Hollywood. And you saw it right here on Miss Tony's show. <laughs> I'm so, so honored once again, Charles, for um for you coming through and taking the time. You know, I so appreciate you. Well, thank you. And to everybody out there, continue to support my sis, Ms. Tony, because I'm going to support her for a lifetime. And I know for a fact that she's going to do some damage to the enemy and bring the rewards back to God for his glory. So amen, I'm proud amen. of you. Thank you so very much. So look, guys, we're going to wrap it up with Charles D. Clark. Um, I was so appreciative that he came on, but we're definitely going to be following him. And um, just to let you guys know, this is it. We are done. Okay. Um, when Charles has some more stuff going on, we're going to bring him back on so he could keep us updated with what he's doing. But um, that's it. So thank you for watching On The Move with Miss Tony. And just in case you want to know, the outfit that I am wearing today is by one of my favorite designers. Once again, Sharon Stain. So make sure you guys follow and look out for her as well. She does fabulous crochet work. But this is it. See you guys on another episode of On The Move with Miss Tony. Thank you, Charles. Thank you.